Liao Wei Kan Jin Hyuk was quite surprised when he had to spend so much money just to find him. You even used a divine creation just to find me, huh? If your managers find out, they'll be furious. It really shouldn't teach wealthy people to spend money like this, but using money to go down to meet the king of the dead might be worth reconsidering the nonsense. Those managers can't get into this tower. If I kill all of you, no one will know. So why worry? After saying that, he took some sort of pill from the box and popped it into his mouth, using the mature honed lion pill. His old, decrepit body began to swell up like a balloon from the 90s. Kuruta felt a surge of power. All stats would double within an hour, and any powers not used within the designated time would disappear. At this moment, a tremendous force of dark energy erupted from the old man. Terasa and Chanyosan felt a foreboding aura. Alice sneered at these inferior beings, suddenly summoned by Kang Jinhyuk, back into the ring. What's this all about, she thought. Getting involved in this doesn't seem good at all. Just staying here quietly is enough to get killed, yes sir. Terasa said, there are too many of them. Shall we call for reinforcements? Kan Jin Hyuk summoned battle spirits in combat mode. Five battle spirits formed a combat unit. He smirked and sent them to fight. Let them see the power of martial arts, he said. Terasa and Chun Yusung were astonished by the scene. What do we do now? At this moment, a surprise attack came from above. Kang Jin Hyuk immediately jumped to avoid it. He angrily pursued the attacker, attacking and shouting at the protagonist. Kang Jin Hyuk suddenly backed off. Found it, huh? Why did you stop? He said, smirking. You must know what this is, right? This is the most troublesome divine creation. 425, Prison and Annihilation Correct. This divine creation, every time it's activated, brings disaster. And it's rumored that the fourth activation will bring great luck. Mudong angry sneered and said, You think I'm stupid, don't you? Calling for three disasters in this small place. If you think you can intimidate me, you're wrong. The protagonist quietly activated the prison and annihilation. The first disaster was approaching. The first disaster in the Black Beetle tomb appeared, with a scorpion stinger swooping down, catching the people below off guard. Terasa couldn't see Alice anywhere. The communicator crackled. Terasa, save yourself first, Alice's voice said. Then he activated the battlefield setup skill. And Mudong roared in anger, you fool. Have you gone mad? Committing suicide isn't enough. You want to drag everyone else down with you. Kan Jin Yuk stood not far away, holding the prison and annihilation in his hand. He put it in his pocket as if nothing had happened. You're making a fuss about nothing, he said, laughing. You've torn it up too big already. I'm just getting started. After all, the fourth activation is yet to come. This thing is really good for you, but that's enough. Even if it costs me anything, I must get that box back. The protagonist, upon hearing this, picked up the sword and said, Yes, sir. Below, scorpions and beasts were fighting each other. Above, the protagonist was busy dodging and counterattacking attacking Mu Dong's assaults. I have to be patient, he thought. Anyway, it started. I'll blow up the prison and annihilation as quickly as possible. It said that right after the fourth blow, there will be a great opportunity. I must be the one to receive that opportunity. The old man continued to attack him relentlessly, surely thinking so. He guessed the old man's thoughts just now. Indeed, people say that the prison and annihilation will bring great luck, but it also depends on how one views it. For some it may be luck, but for others it may be misfortune. He sat atop the tower, continuing to raise the prison and annihilation and blow it. The third disaster was approaching, a spatial gate opening up, blinding everyone with light. A large black creature appeared, launching an attack with its magic. Be careful, it can dissolve anything it touches, people shouted. 
the protagonist used his shield to defend against the creature's attacks. With the prison and annihilation in hand, he thought, now I just need to drop this naturally, and it'll be over. He laughed, then threw the prison and annihilation far away. According to the script, it fell into Leo Wei's hands. He couldn't believe how easily he had acquired the prison and annihilation. Far away, Mudong was ecstatic, shouting, Great, bring it back to me quickly. Leo Wei, however, hesitated. Why do you want to blow up this unlucky thing? Kang Jin Hik asked. Leo Wei laughed in response. I've tried so hard before, so let me have some fun this time. But if it was too late, he blew up the prison and annihilation thinking that luck was coming his way. Peace was restored to the king's tomb. Outside the tomb, a cup suddenly fell from a high tower, surprising a blonde youth who looked towards the sky. Suddenly, a bright light shone from the front, and everyone stood still, wondering what was happening. The fourth disaster was approaching. Chun Yusung sat on the ground, indifferent, while Terasa paced back and forth, saying, It's best if you conserve your energy, saint. Terasa suddenly noticed Chun Yusung drinking a potion to replenish his strength and asked anxiously, How can you be so calm? Aren't you worried about Kang Jin Yik? Chun Yusung chuckled and replied sarcastically, Worried about him? We've known him for so long, haven't we? Most of what's happening is probably his doing anyway. So this situation is likely his plan too. There's no reason for us to get involved. So please sit down and conserve your energy. Chun Yusung handed over the remaining potion to calm Terasa. At this point, Terasa didn't know what else to say. The remaining time was only 5 minutes and 21 seconds. The chosen battlefield had ended and both of them escaped. Terasa wondered where the previous disasters had gone. Suddenly, Liao Wei shouted, Kan Jin Yik. Terasa and Chun Yusung were shocked when they saw a monster in the glass cage above. Witness the punishment for daring to cause trouble in the king's tomb. Someone shouted. Chaos ensued as the announcement was made that the tomb's owner agreed to give the grave robbers a chance to repent. A gateway leading to the execution ground appeared, and disasters would be created. As Leo Wei screamed and was dragged away by Mudong, he thought, I have to go home. My house is on fire. Mudong ordered, Bring the injured back, that's an order. He glanced at the glass cage and thought, If I'm the one who blew up the prison and annihilation, will all this change to the world of martial arts? Although I couldn't kill Kan Jin Yuk, I still have luck this time. Mu Dong unleashed his power, destroying the entire building. Kang Jin Hyuk angrily stared at the destroyed buildings, and the beasts worriedly looked at their leader. Are you okay? Kang Jin Hyuk asked. Ignoring Terasa's calls, he continued into the glass cage, despite Terasa's pleas. Kang Jin Hyuk, Kang Jin Hyuk. The buildings in the glass cage were continuously destroyed and the spirits couldn't hold on anymore. She activated the air shield and was knocked down. She shouted to everyone around, What are you standing there for? Run away quickly. She got up and thought, I have to prolong the time until Nangong returns, even if it's just for a second. Suddenly, Kang Jin Hyuk and Chun Yu Sun appeared, swiftly defeating the monsters. Kang Jin Hyuk said, Shun Yu Sung, do you think you can hold that scorpion for ten minutes? Shun Yu Sung smiled and replied confidently, I can kill that bastard even in ten minutes. With that, he activated the battlefield selection, transporting the user to the chosen location. On this side, only Kang Jin Hyuk and Sotin remained. Terasa asked him if he was Kang Jin Hyuk and why he was here. Kang Jin Hyuk pondered for a moment before replying, What do you think? Of course, to earn EXP. The obstacles continued to attack the civilians. Terasa suddenly appeared, destroying them and activating her divine power. She thought, There are still many civilians who haven't evacuated yet. I have to extend the time for them to save more people. 
The monster suddenly became enraged, unleashing even more ferocious power, attacking everyone and taking control of their minds. Terasa was shocked to see people transforming. Why are they transforming? They're attacking me. Terasa felt extreme horror as she was attacked from all sides. She felt numbness in her scalp. The monsters became more aggressive, enjoying the thrill of slaughter. In another development, Chun Yusung was battling the scorpion. He activated a one-on-one -on -one combat mode, increasing all his stats by 10% and reducing the opponent's stats by 10%. While fighting, he remembered Kan Jin Hyuk's expression earlier. He realized that even Kan Jin Hyuk wasn't omnipotent. So, he continued to activate his sword techniques and take the initiative. Han Jin Hyuk stood atop a building witnessing everything. The hidden mission notification system was activated, stating that once all three disasters were eliminated, the rewards would vary depending on the completion. A voice offered a contract, asking if he needed help, but Kan Jin Hyuk refused, aware that too many people were watching. He thought about his plan to release the monsters into the martial world and steal secret martial arts techniques and treasures. Seeing the deaths of others, he clenched his teeth in anger. Then he jumped down and shot three arrows at the monster to activate the two-star severance formation. As he fought, he resolved to be more cautious and accurate from now on. Meanwhile, Terasa was activating her divine mode to protect the civilians and deal with the monster. She thought about her duty to help others in need, even if it meant risking her life. She activated her divine power and killed the monster slowly. However, the monster suddenly grew stronger and started controlling the people around, lifting them up and killing them. Terasa, witnessing this scene, remembered her parents' teachings about duty. She resolved to protect others at all costs. However, the monster's laughter made her lose control, and she muttered to herself, Kill me, kill me. The notification appeared, indicating that the saintess was showing signs of being controlled. Kan Jin Hyuk threw another monster at it and questioned Terasa about her actions. He warned her not to let her die easily and summoned his beast, the ancient dragon Goguma, to defeat the monster. After defeating the monster, Goguma returned to its original form and licked Tarasa's forehead before looking at Kang Jin Hyuk and groaning happily. Kang Jin Hyuk activated his greed eyes, but couldn't help but furrow his brow, thinking it was unexpected for Tarasa to collapse like this. He caught Tarasa and Alice spoke up, asking why the same test had collapsed. Kan Jin Hyuk replied that he didn't know, but Alice continued, asking if he understood the significance of the saintess collapsing. Kan Jin Hyuk, feeling a bit confused, replied heavily, Yes, I know it means everyone should be careful around her in the future. Then he cancelled the battlefield selection. On the other side, Shun yu -sun was battling the Black Scorpion until his sword broke in two. He was wounded, but the system kept displaying that he had leveled up. Kang Jin Hyuk approached Chun Yu Sung and said, You did well. Chun Yu Sung looked up at Kang Jin Hyuk and replied, You can think whatever you want about me. I don't care. But I know I still have to try harder. Suddenly, Kang Jin Hyuk firmly lifted the broken sword and said, This time, I saw how I could do it. Kang Jin Hyuk frowned at the broken sword. But Chun yu -sung, without hesitation, drew another sword from his side and said, You should discard that broken sword. Chun yu -sung was surprised when Kang jin Hyuk left, but Kang jin Hyuk complimented him. You did well, Chun yu -sung. Suddenly, the system displayed an urgent message, asking if he wanted to return to the hall. Kang jin Hyuk agreed. In the hall area, the high-level manager of the tower, Hatin, was standing on the platform, addressing the players. He announced that they had detected interference from the Alliance of Martial Arts into the system without proper authorization, causing the accident. As the high-level manager, he apologized deeply, but mere apologies were not enough. 
He then initiated a punishment, creating a purple vortex. The high-level management began punishing the offenders. Hatting continued, stating that the Alliance of Martial Arts had committed a serious crime, and as a manager he couldn't forgive it. As punishment, they would confiscate all the Alliance's currency. The members of the Alliance were shocked. Meanwhile, Yoshio, enraged, turned away, thinking about his inability to contact Carmen or Moyong Su. He had invested in the Alliance of Martial Arts, but now they were done. He wondered where Leia was at such a critical moment. Yoshio accidentally bumped into a man who hastily apologized and then focused on the tower's sky sword he was holding. Yoshio was surprised, asking if he had stolen it. The man, gripping Yoshio's collar, questioned him about his intentions. Shun Yusung, unable to contain his anger, looked at Yoshio and said, What do you want to steal? When he saw Yoshio's face, he was surprised. Yoshio exclaimed, Oh, it's you. Yoshio swiftly drew his sword and performed a maneuver, quickly sheathing it again. Yoshio's face turned pale, unable to stand steadily. Chun Yusung turned and left, saying, I'll spare you. Yoshio, now terrified, looked at the sky sword in amazement. Meanwhile, Kang Jin Hyuk's system kept displaying urgent messages. He had fulfilled the conditions to copy a skill. The condition was to defeat Joshua with the help of others. Now, Kang Jin Hyuk successfully copied the sword drawing skill. His attack speed and damage increased by 25% after the first sword draw attack. Kang Jin Hyuk marveled at his own power and achievement. Hatin approached him, suggesting that the faction selection was becoming chaotic and he should choose a side. Kang Jin Hyuk agreed. Hatin then addressed everyone, thanking them for their attention. He informed them that Kang Jin Hyuk had decided not to join any faction. People below started to murmur in surprise and disappointment. Hatin explained that Kang Jin Hyuk had collected 1,500,000 points and fulfilled the hidden condition of collecting over 1 million points, giving him the ability to create a new force. Hatin maintained his mysterious smile, thinking about how they didn't know how Kang Jin Yuk knew about the hidden condition. Penheimer objected as the representative of the Empire, saying he opposed the formation of a new force. Kang Jin Hyuk accepted Penheimer's objection. Before he had considered joining the Empire, Hatin then remarked about the sudden refusal to establish a new force and mentioned that according to the Tao's rules, an objection required a year for evaluation. Penheimer immediately questioned Kang Jin Hyuk, asking what was going on. He reminded Kang Jin Hyuk that he had promised to join their side. Kang Jin Hyuk rebutted, saying he had only promised to consider joining the Empire. This enraged Penheimer who couldn't believe Kang Jin Hyuk thought he could just brush everything aside with mere words. He reminded Kang Jin Hyuk of the efforts they had put in to fulfill his request and urged him to keep his promise. Then, Penheimer attacked Kang Jin Hyuk. Kang Jin Hyuk knew that all the faction's representatives were observing the situation. If he lost here, his intention to establish a new force would vanish. This was the perfect moment to use it. Kang Jin Hyuk smiled and called out to Alice. Alice lazily responded, asking what he wanted. Kang Jin Hyuk asked her to lend him some power. Alice's face changed, but Kang Jin Hyuk activated the power-sharing feature. Immediately, he gained access to Alice's skill, for Mataraxia's blood revelation. Now, Kang Jin Hyuk could control the blood of all living creatures within the area he used the skill. A powerful aura surrounded him, astonishing everyone. Penheimer was stunned, feeling as if his blood was boiling. His eyes couldn't believe what they were seeing. Kan Jin Hyuk marveled at the fact that Penheimer wasn't someone they could convince to join their side. Using the powerful magic of blood revelation continuously affected Penheimer, who, overwhelmed by the immense power and the control over his blood, couldn't resist and hastily begged Kang Jin Yu to withdraw everything he had just said. 
Kan Jin Hyuk stopped his actions and said, That's enough. High level manager Hatin looked at Kang Jin Hyuk, recalling his previous conversation with Rick Hennessy. Rick had suggested keeping an eye on Kang Jin Hyuk, as he believed Kang Jin Hyuk would be a great source of entertainment for them. Hatin agreed, realizing there were many mysteries and interesting aspects to Kang Jin Hyuk. Suddenly, the manager announced, that if all objections were now null and void, Kan Jin Hyuk could now choose a name for his new force. Kan Jin Hyuk pondered, but the system informed that a new force had already been established and registered under the name Veterans Company. Penheimer left, saying they would meet again soon, and they would discuss their relationship further. From then on, Penheimer never pressured or urged anyone again. Xiao Tin's recovery process was remarkably quick, even though no one bothered to dig deeper to uncover the truth. A large monument was erected in the square to commemorate those who had fallen during the riots. Xiao Tin placed a white chrysanthemum in front of the monument as her own tribute. At the memorial, Kang Jin Yuk noticed people grieving deeply for their lost loved ones. He activated his stoic power to maintain his composure even in the most crucial situations, gently placing a white chrysanthemum and then quickly leaving. Back at home, Alice lazily lounged on the bed, remarking on how hectic things had been. She acknowledged that Kan Jin Hyuk had unexpectedly created a new force. Kan Jin Hyuk chuckled and activated the system, agreeing to use one million 150,000 Xu to increase the force's numbers by 23. He thought about how his channel was gaining more views and profits every day and how he would use it for good. The system then displayed that the veterans' company's force had increased to 23 members. Chun yu Sun was the first to accept Kang jin Hyuk's invitation, followed by Li Taemin, Yan Wo, Melina, and Li Yuri's group. Although there was a slight time difference, everyone eventually accepted. However, Terasa apologized, saying she had already joined another force. Terasa was the only one who refused Kan Jin Hyuk's invitation. I guess I was right. A holy knight like her should naturally join the Empire. It's fine, I kind of expected it. There's nothing I can do to change that. Kan Jin Hyuk immediately sent an invitation to the boss monster of the fifth floor of the tower, and it was quickly accepted. Now the fifth floor is part of the ex-soldier company's power. Kang Jin Hyuk couldn't help but marvel. Now I've got almost unlimited resources in my hands from the lower levels of the tower. However, things didn't stop there. I also made the most of the rewards received from defeating the boss. I used a free copy ticket, and the system informed me that I could copy the skills of an opponent without meeting the copying conditions. So I copied the skills of OCD, the sacred spirit of the sun, which can reproduce the power of the sun. Kang Jin Hyuk's strength increased from 25 to 50, and his magic power increased from 143 to 154. He thought to himself, that should do it. After distributing the current status points and observing his status board, Kang Jin Yu couldn't help but marvel. Yes, that's it. It's all coming together, getting more perfect every day. Kang Jin Hyuk's face revealed a sinister smile. I'm ready, he said. So, what's next? Alice observed from behind, unable to help but marvel. I've never seen anyone with such a mysterious face before. Occasionally, I have to admit it's quite unfamiliar. Alice suddenly realized something. She got up. Wait, he's the first person to borrow my blood revelation, she thought. That's right, and there are many other strange things besides. Things that a person from outside the tower like him shouldn't know. These things made Alice very curious. She was about to ask him what she should ask when something crossed her mind. Alice hesitated. She was puzzled and confused by her actions. Kang Jin Hyuk noticed Alice's actions and spoke up. What are you up to, he asked. Alice rubbed her forehead. I have a feeling. I was going to ask you something. What's next? 
Kan Jin Hyuk replied, Oh, is that so? Well then, next we'll go to the eighth floor. Of course, before that, we have to deal with all the remaining issues. Last time, Kan Jin Hyuk asked Hatting for a favor. He said to Hatting, Can you transfer this to someone named Yang Haoming in the martial arts world? This is my second request. It's a sealed letter. Hatting accepted and said, Sure, it's not a difficult task. But what's written in this letter? Kan Jin Hyuk just laughed mysteriously and said, It's a business invitation. At this moment, he was on the fifth floor of the Chamanj Tower. Kan Jin Hyuk slowly opened his eyes and saw the person he needed to meet standing in front of him. He said, He's here. Yang Homing, the leader of the Hak Fong Doan martial arts sect. Kan Jin Hyuk handed the green faced sword technique manual over to him and said, Let's get straight to the point. At the same time, Kan Jin Hyuk activated his gourmet eyes. In the martial arts world, one of the main forces in the mid levels of the Challenge Tower, where those who are knowledgeable about martial arts reside, the Chanma sect is considered the strongest force. There is an organization created to worship him, the Chanma sect. In this Chanma sect, Yang Haoming is relatively lowly regarded compared to his true strength, and now, as the martial arts world's resources are gradually depleting, his desire for power is at its peak. Yang Homing asked, So what do you want? The system displayed information about Yang Haoming. Male, 43 years old, level 65, strength 35, agility 45, stamina 26, magic power 11, internal power 56, current status points 0, occupation, martial arts hero, skills, shadow heaven technique, shadow guardian, shadow heaven set, guardian set, mixed blood death, and a few other skills not listed by the system. Yang Homing is now broadcasting because of his ideal of becoming a strong martial artist. As long as you give him a little hope of success, you can copy one of his skills. Kan Jin Hyuk smiled and threw the green-faced sword technique, manual, towards Yang Haoming, who quickly caught it in surprise. Why are you giving me this? Yang Haoming asked incredulously. Kan Jin Hyuk shrugged and said casually, Take it. I already got what I wanted. Yang Haoming remained silent, puzzled. I got it already. What's he thinking? He thought, but then he shook his head. Well, it doesn't matter. No matter what happens, I have the support of Hak Fong Woi here with me. Looking at the green-faced sword technique, manual in his hand, Yang Haoming couldn't help but feel happy. He smirked to himself. With this, if it's really the sword technique of the great master swordsman, it will be a great help in my journey to success. Finally, I have hope. He then opened the green-faced sword technique manual that Kan Jin Yuk had given him. The system immediately displayed that the copying conditions had been met, but this sword technique manual is strange. The first few pages of the sword technique manual were titled Poppy. Today, a cat appeared outside my house. It was very cute. I named it Poppy. Today, Poppy scratched me and ran away. From now on, I swear I will hate it forever. The incomprehensible content, along with the sketch of a crescent moon, made Yang Haoming's forehead furrow with confusion. He spoke up. What is this? Han Jin Yuk replied. That's my martial artist's diary from when I was young. Stealing it was quite a challenge, you know. Yang Haoming immediately threw the book away angered. Are you mocking me? he exclaimed. Do you know how much it cost me to get here? Did you call me here just for this? Kan Jin Hyuk calmly responded, You guys are too boring. I thought I should show you this as the disciple of the Black Emperor. Yang Haoming was surprised and muttered to himself. He thought, the arm of the demon must be a powerful elder with power equivalent to Hak Fong Hoi. How can the title of such a great person be uttered from the mouth of an outsider? Yang Haoming angrily ordered his men not to do anything, and then lowered his voice in anger. How dare you disrespect me? 
Have you forgotten whose family name I once served? Let me see how I can shut you up. He quickly moved to punch Kang Jin Hyuk from behind. Kang Jin Hyuk remained calm and said, That's exactly what I want. Yang Homing activated his Shadow Heaven technique and shouted, Die! The force of his punch was so powerful that it cracked the ground. He couldn't help but be surprised at how Kang Jin Hyuk was able to easily block his Shadow Heaven technique. How can you stop my Shadow Heaven technique so easily? he exclaimed. But before he could react further, Kang Jin Hyuk grabbed Yang Homing's fist and threw him behind him. The surrounding guards shouted in surprise. Captain Kang Jin Hyuk combined the Sword Tomb technique with the Shadow Heaven technique. They exclaimed. And then he focused his power into one arm. Kang Jin Hyuk, feeling exhilarated, thought to himself, I have the ability to copy and combine various skills, and the skill created from such a combination is always a better version of the originals. He then activated the Shadow Demon Emperor technique. Both Yang Haming and his guards were amazed. This was a technique used by the Shadow Emperor. Kang Jin Hyuk used the Shadow Strike and struck Yang Haming with great force, causing the floor to crack open. Seeing the light shining through the crack, Kang Jin Hyuk approached and said, Do you believe me now that I am the disciple of the Shadow Emperor? Yang Haming was taken aback. Yes, I have heard, he said. There was a time when he left the tower to recruit talents. The Shadow Emperor has begun to act. Tears welled up in his eyes as he bowed his head. I pay my respects to the disciple of the Shadow Emperor. Yang Haming was now ecstatic, thinking to himself, I will also have a chance to become stronger. Kang Jin Hyuk was pleased. These gangsters are easily swayed as long as they can use the skills of their masters, he thought. All right, all the things I don't want to do on the eighth floor, I'll leave to him. The eighth floor of the Challenge Tower had a diameter of 10,000 kilometers, a gigantic maze that resembled the Earth. It had its own ecosystem, but apart from its large size, there were no other threats. Cleaning up the eighth floor would be simple as long as they found the energy stones hidden somewhere in the maze. Melina, a secret agent of the Demon Alliance, had been sent to investigate the situation on the eighth floor. There were hundreds of entrances to the maze, hidden with trading stalls selling materials found in the maze, enough to make a fortune. Kang Jin Hyuk thought to himself that because of him, he had been working so hard for so long. It was natural to have a little fun. Melina stopped in front of a necklace shop and asked, How much is this? But immediately, she turned and ran away when she saw Kang Jin Hyuk approaching from behind. Kang Jin Hyuk caught her and grinned dangerously, asking, Where are you going? Startled, Melina regained consciousness with Kang Jin Hyuk's mark on her face. After a while of talking, Kang Jin Hyuk understood that she was here to investigate the phenomenon of the dual image. Melina replied, Yes, Lazarus said the signs are becoming clearer on the eighth floor. Kang Jin Hyuk thought, The dual image is a phenomenon where some floors of the tower move at a faster speed than the others. Melina was somewhat annoyed and frustrated. She immediately sensed something and released a shadow energy forward. However, the figure quickly dispelled Melina's shadow energy. Kang Jin Hyuk then spoke up, Hold on, we're on the same side as her. He then smirked at Melina, Throwing knives at someone you just met like that. Melina replied defiantly, Who would avoid their own kind like this in the dark? The figure then turned into a person. Kang Jin Hyuk immediately said, Let's introduce ourselves. This is Wo Leong of Hak Fong Hoi. The system suddenly announced some information about Wo Leong. Name. Wo Leong. Male, 22 years old. Rank 47. Strength 20. Agility 55. Stamina 19. Magic power 11. Internal power 60. Occupation. Guardian practitioner. Skills. Proficient in the art of using the image-interrupting transcendent sword, Quan, shadow magic, 
defensive shadow, guardian key, also skilled in loyalty and several other undisclosed skills by the system. Currently, Wo Liang is standing beside you not because he trusts you but due to Yang Haoming's command. If you could gain his trust, you might be able to copy one of his skills. Kan Jin Yik secretly wondered how to gain his trust. Melina, curious and teasing, tapped Wo Liang's chest, remarking on his attire, asking if he was planning to film something. However, before she could finish, she was threatened with a sword at her throat. Startled, she looked around and noticed some figures emerging from the shadows. Frightened, she screamed. Kan Jin Yik calmly advised Melina to behave, noting that at least thirty people were hiding in the darkness. Melina awkwardly replied and then hastily left, bidding farewell and promising to meet again at the next gathering. However, she was stopped by a seal on her face. Melina reluctantly returned, following Kang Jin Yuk with great discomfort. Let's go, leader, Kafring said in another area, twenty kilometers from the entrance to the eighth floor. Captain, the reconnaissance team hasn't returned either, said a member, Thatcho, of a rank. Jack Friedman tensed, feeling that something was amiss. There shouldn't be any major threats on this floor, he thought to himself. Suddenly, he heard a swift approaching sound. Alerted, he activated his defensive posture. From the opposite side, hundreds of arrows shot straight towards Jack, attacking him. Jack was horrified as his arm, which had blocked the blow earlier, continued to tremble. He wondered about the strength behind this attack. There shouldn't be any creatures this powerful here. Friedman shouted, realizing the severity of the situation. We're under attack. Everyone, prepare to fight. As their opponents began to appear, a strange group with pale blue skin and equipped with weapons emerged. Seeing his opponents, Jack's team was somewhat surprised by the power displayed earlier. They're just a bunch of monsters, Kafrink sneered arrogantly. Let me handle them, she declared boldly, activating her fireball, only to find it ineffective against the creatures. The monsters quickly countered, surprising everyone with their swift and vicious attacks. They're too fast, Kafrink exclaimed, before being physically attacked leaving her seriously injured and bleeding. Seeing her condition, her teammates shouted warnings, realizing that the creatures were using poison. Be careful, everyone, the captain ordered as he led them into battle. Jack, witnessing everything, was amazed as he couldn't discern any of the new techniques used by their opponent. His respect for Wo Liang increased slightly. Kang Jin Yuk, meanwhile, silently observed Jack's group and then directed his attention forward. With a series of swift sword strikes, he swiftly defeated the creatures, stunning onlookers with his prowess. Amidst the chaos, one stubborn monster attempted to rise, but was swiftly subdued under Kan Jin Yuk's foot. As Kan Jin Yuk continued to assess the situation, a series of spears flew towards him. Reacting swiftly, he activated his hidden moon technique, deflecting the weapons with a giant red hand. He then turned his attention to the oncoming monsters, each strike powerful and precise, causing them to fall one by one. Within seconds, Han Jin Hyuk had neutralized the threat with a series of advanced techniques, leaving Jack astounded by his abilities. They're not just ordinary monsters, he thought, realizing the gravity of their situation. Melina, perplexed, approached to observe the aftermath. What are these creatures? she asked. Kan Jin Yuk, after a moment's reflection, explained that they were the bosses of the ninth floor. And this is the consequence of the double image, he added. Melina, still confused, tried to comprehend the situation, while Kan Jin Yuk silently pondered the significance of respecting such a powerful individual. Kang Jin Hyuk looked up as if observing something, along with Melina's puzzled expression. Floors 8 and 9 have been connected again, he said. Meanwhile, elsewhere, some individuals were observing the movements of the group. Kang Jin Hyuk, one of those observers, chuckled mockingly. We have quite an interesting troublemaker here. All for our great leader, 
Min Zhongwu remarked, relaxing in a luxurious bath with a cute toy duck. He sighed with satisfaction before receiving an emergency call notification from the system. It was Kang Jin Yuk on the line, causing Min Zhongwu to panic and nervously shield himself. Kang Jin Yuk greeted him with a smirk. Let's make a deal, he said. Disheartened, Min Zhongwu asked if Kang Jin Yuk could contact him through more conventional means next time before returning to the intense battle against the monsters. The fight seemed endless, leaving even Wo Leon exhausted. Kang Jin Hyuk took out a strange red pill and, amidst Melina's bewildered expression, sniffed it. What's that? she asked. Kang Jin Hyuk replied casually, holding the pill up to the monster's noses, explaining that it was just a drug effective against creatures with a specific red mark. Immediately, the ferocious monsters turned docile and foolish, leaving Melina astonished. Seems like it's called nullification, Kan Jin Hyuk remarked coolly. After Kan Jin Hyuk's declaration, the monsters both fought and constructed a wooden cart under his command, indicating the end of the fight. Let's go, he announced cheerfully, as the enslaved monsters obediently pulled the cart away. Melina raised an eyebrow, questioning Kan Jin Hyuk's motives, to which he explained that it was for transportation efficiency. However, Melina suspected there was more to it and asked for the real purpose. Intrigued, Kang Jin Hyuk explained that it was for demonstration purposes, to show their new master the ineffectiveness of such tricks against him. Angered by their opponent's calculations, the observing figures clenched their teeth, planning for the future. Returning to the present, after Kang Jin Hyuk's statement, Wo Leong prodded Melina emotionlessly asking a question related to their leader's ruthlessness. Melina hesitantly pointed to the figure ahead, confirming his suspicions. He's the new one, isn't he? she said, warning that he wouldn't hesitate to resort to any means to achieve his goals. Jack encouraged Kafrink, who was now vomiting blood, to hold on a little longer as they were nearing the exit. Suddenly, a voice interrupted, causing everyone to stop. It seemed to come from a dangerous individual. Jack prepared to draw his sword, demanding the revelation of the speaker's identity. Carmen, pointing at himself, calmly emerged, radiating dark energy resembling a demon. He introduced himself as a loyal subordinate and then unleashed his controlled demonic army, eagerly attacking their enemies. Kan Jin Yuk observed with a somewhat cryptic tone, commanding to stop. Melina was once again puzzled. Kan Jin Hyuk then purchased a cheap mining pick from the system and activated the three-star reinforcement spell, followed by the hidden flame ignition. Astonished by the sudden evolution, Melina exclaimed, realizing the potential impact of their actions. Kan Jin Hyuk ordered the obedient subordinates to dig a hole in the wall, leaving Melina in disbelief at their efficiency. She realized that at this rate, they would clear the floor in less than a week. As she glanced at the man giving instructions, she pondered whether to switch sides. Carmen's laughter echoed behind her, indicating his satisfaction with their plan to eradicate floor eight. I understand what you're trying to convey, the mysterious figure responded. Enough is enough, he continued, suggesting they would soon lose floor eight if they kept it up. Are you trying to convey a message, anonymous one? Upon seeing the appearance of the unfamiliar figures Melina and Wo Leong, they immediately assumed defensive stances, preparing to attack. Wo Leong shook his finger, warning, don't be too quick to act. We have a hostage, remember? The group of Jack's people promptly emerged behind Carmen, surrounded by relentless electric currents assaulting them. Carmen pointed at them, tauntingly saying, these valuable people you worked so hard to save are resting comfortably somewhere. Just follow me, and I'll release them safely. Before she could finish, Carmen was swiftly attacked by Kang Jin Yuk, who grabbed the giant's hand and delivered a punch to his face. Carmen was left stunned, unable to react. Kang Jin Hyuk lifted Carmen high, threateningly holding him by the neck as he delivered a barrage of punches, taunting. Did you really think I would care about that hostage of yours? 
You've underestimated me. You even thought you could bluff with that hostage bait, but you've only handed yourself to me. Opening a portal to escape will be your biggest mistake. Quickly resorting to his techniques, Carmen attempted to attack Kang Jin Yuk, activating his dark energy sphere and attempting to retreat into it. But he was horrified to find himself overpowered. Realizing his grave mistake, Carmen was subjected to Kang Jin Yuk's dark magic technique, a punch that shattered the energy sphere and sent Carmen flying into the air, held by his neck, while Kang Jin Yuk threatened him. You must face the consequences of your actions. Your defeat is inevitable. As a result, Carmen lost consciousness, his teeth scattered, under the watchful eyes of Melina and Wuryong. Meanwhile, the woman controlling the monsters suddenly opened a spatial portal, and Carmen was disgracefully thrown through it in a humiliating state as Kan Jin Yuk calmly stepped into the enemy's territory. Kang Jin Yuk casually commented on their busy preparations, flexing his blood-stained hand, regretting the shortcut he took, arriving a bit early to the scene. Melina, wiping her forehead, sighed, This is getting out of hand. Didn't you guys think so? The situation appeared chaotic, surrounded by imposing figures. Wo Liang intervened, suggesting, I will assist in creating an escape route for our leader Golian the unknown master. Golion paused his fierce response, acknowledging Wo Liang's loyalty with admiration from the bottom of his heart. Golion recalled how he had long neglected those who cared for him, realizing the true depth of their loyalty, bringing him a sense of comfort and obedience to orders, acknowledging the trials they endured. Wo Liang's loyalty increased by 20 points, according to the system's notification. Meanwhile, the woman ordered the lower-ranked monsters to deal with the intruder's rudeness, determined to capture the arrogant individual, and promised a reward for whoever managed to defeat them. The first boss monster emerged, wielding a large axe, challenging Golian, declaring their battle to Kang Jin Hyuk. With a swift strike, Golian swiftly defeated the monster, leaving the remaining monsters stunned by the unexpected turn of events. Amidst the chaos, Jefferson lay defeated on the ground, attempting to establish contact with someone, only to find his live stream function unavailable. Frustrated, he sought ways to communicate with them, his mind in disarray, unaware of the glowing ring on his finger. Meanwhile, the American Awakening Association members discussed their next moves, unaware of Jefferson's struggles. Jack proceeded to level 8, and has disappeared over there. Mayak Tlai Awakening Association Media Department slammed the table in anger, saying, That man is writing something. Calmly analyzing the situation, a member commented, The Russian and Ando players are acting very aggressively now, disrupting the balance of power in the world. We can't send American players to support anymore. We also need to defend ourselves. Atlay, you know more than I do. Atle raised his head to look at her, his face weary and his clothes disheveled, indicating overwork without self-care. An emergency medical team member approached him, urging him to take care of himself. The Hesit Awakening Association team captain bowed his head to read the report on his hand, then stated, besides, level 8 is just a giant maze. With enough time and effort, there's no reason he wouldn't make it out. I know Jack is your boyfriend, but you don't need to get so worked up. She clenched her teeth, restraining herself from hitting him. As she left the room, the staff outside trembled in fear at her demeanor. She cursed the national security for not even bothering to rescue their own players, worrying about her boyfriend Jack, who must be in danger. She felt it keenly. Suddenly, Jack sent a message requesting to share his night vision tag. Through the shared tag, she witnessed the chaotic scene where Jack was. Excited that she finally contacted Jack, she began live streaming again, attracting a growing number of viewers who discussed the unusual situation. Confusion and speculation filled the screen, with many wondering how Level 8 could have so many monsters. 
Meanwhile, some deduced that they must have found and exploited a skill Lufo to share night vision tax. They were surprised to see the figure of the unknown standing there, the only player capable of defeating Kan Jinyuk, yet reluctant to intervene directly. The unknown wiped his blood-stained hands, clearly from fighting the monsters, not himself. Addressing a clay, he said, Are you just going to let me handle everything alone? I'll keep collecting experience like this forever. Atlay bit her lip, silently cursing him for joking at such a time. This time, she was truly angry. Now, she finally showed her power by activating her lightning flash ability, sending lightning bolts crashing down menacingly. Golem, worried, reminded her to prepare quickly, while Melina casually remarked on the chaos, scratching her head and saying, this mess is quite something, but those elementals must be enjoying their role. Golian asked why the elementals from level 25 were here, and Melina questioned the elementals, who explained they were here due to their master's orders. The unknown raised his hand, activating his formidable seal to demonstrate his power, prompting Melina to challenge him. He quickly dispatched her to deal with monsters, while Alice offered her assistance which he declined, saying everything was under control, at least for now. As he evaluated the battle situation, Ho invited her to remove her leather shoes, revealing Terasa's visit to Yuyeonwo's apartment. Terasa admired the house, and Yuyeonwo blushed, admitting it was her brother Taman's house. Taman greeted Terasa warmly, and she reciprocated, her attention caught by Jin Hyuk's presence. On the screen, Yui Onwa explained, So, it turns out Jin Hyuk has appeared on the news program of Mai. I'm watching to see how it goes. She was surprised and said, Well, now everyone knows the true identity of the anonymous. She pondered whether she should pretend not to know anything, muttering, fake. Yui Onwa casually sat on the sofa next to Taemin. Taemin spoke up, of course, we've known him since the beginning, so we can easily guess his moves. Then, pointing at the computer screen, he said, Look at this. We thought level 8 was just a huge blockade, but now, why is the boss monster of level 9 appearing there? Both Yui Onwa and Taemin were puzzled. Taemin, standing in front of the screen, observed the battle situation. Terasa noticed Melina and Golian teammates who were fighting alongside him, who she had never met before. Colum quickly assessed all nearby monsters. How is she so strong? Melina praised Golian, saying, With her, we'll definitely win. But Golian warned, It's exhausting, you know. Suddenly, the sound of approaching monsters indicated that they were not low-level creatures anymore. Turning around, they saw the boss monster of level 9, the virtuous emperor. Hoknan finally arrived, and Atava was relieved to have timely reinforcement. The lizard Vlom Kangsong of Colossu had bones that could permanently destroy the opponent's weapons, while the black one used blood chi, causing permanent disabilities. Jin Hyuk silently evaluated the preparations made by them, realizing it was a significant nuisance. Atava angrily scolded the two late boss monsters, leading to a heated argument between them. The lizard, Vuong Kangsong, said, You're pretending to be a team leader, while the black one cried and lamented, Do you think this is easy? Atara silenced them and ordered to kill all the latecomers. Hoknan disdainfully dealt with the insignificant gang. Meanwhile, Wolyon monitored the online store. Yes, my lord, his subordinates were ready to obey. They swiftly attacked the wolves approaching. Hokanan quickly stepped on one of his subordinates, causing fatal internal bleeding. Let me swallow you whole, he threatened. Golan countered Nanhak's attack, using her agility to move swiftly, leaving only their residual images visible. Nanhak finally felt the pain as his body was covered in bleeding wounds. These gangsters don't regard anyone, he thought. Melina was also fiercely fighting the love spirits. When called by Jin Hyuk, she replied she was very busy, as her vital item was vibrating. 
He pointed towards the appearing lifeline on the screen, reminding her, This is your lifeline. There are two minutes and thirty-one seconds left. Protect it well if you want to survive and leave here. Excited to survive, Melina summoned a giant snake to protect herself, exerting immense pressure. Kan Jin Hyuk activated the wind ascension, allowing him to jump a great distance with the help of the wind. He landed where the Divine Guardian was. Goguma's flying mode was activated as he summoned it to quickly move away from the Lizard King. The Lizard was ready to fight but was surprised by Jin Hyuk's tactics. The live stream paused. Melina was disappointed that the interesting part was interrupted. She stood up, holding the TV and shaking it. Why did you stop? It can't be over like this. She shouted, frustrated with the workload and the task of encrypting Kang Jin Hyuk's communication button to Anonymous. Chicks, while working, sighed at the harsh conditions. How can I continue like this? He wondered. Jin Hyuk had promised earlier. When I return, I'll give you a scale of an ancient race, knowing there was nowhere else to obtain it. He thought again. I can't let this opportunity pass. However, he couldn't understand why he was asked to, to create this boundary. The announcement stated that the high floors were not allowed to intervene in level 8. He concentrated deeply, and suddenly, numerous red alerts appeared. He hurried to check the situation, and the workplace became quiet. Bup, bup, bup. The sound of a man's leather shoes echoed as he entered the room. This man carefully touched the warning just now, wearing gloves on his hands. Impressive, truly impressive. I didn't expect you to be so well prepared. It's a pity that the prepared one isn't just you, he said. Then he broke the board with the red warning, laughing dangerously. The boundary announcement has been removed. A horde of aggressive lizards rushed forward. Jin Hyuk rode on Goguma's back, ordering, Take me closer to its head. The small dragon gazed ahead and swiftly flew off. Jin Hyuk wielded his two swords, chopping off the heads of the lizards. I see, he said, quickly sheathing his swords. He then looked down at Atada standing amidst a large group of lizards and was amazed. Did you bring all these from level 9? How come there are so many? The activation of the sunburst notification system triggered a circle of light. Jin Hyuk aimed his bow at the approaching gods, causing them to panic. This way, I can kill a few without any problems, he thought. Activating the ghost chain bullet, he fired arrows that resembled beams of intense light, capable of destroying anything they touched. Atava used his wings to shield himself from the light, activating lightning response to scare off other beasts. Seeing this, Jin Hyuk swiftly retracted his bow. I'm done for now, he said, but before he could finish, he looked up in astonishment. Goguma suddenly growled angrily. Hmm, right, Jin Hyuk calmly acknowledged. Forewarned is forearmed. Atada, after the recent battle, had suffered some injuries to his wings, but he still stood strong on the broken ground, enduring the pain and staring ahead. The activation of the thunder response made Atada concentrate lightning into a large sphere. Meanwhile, Jin Hyo quickly rode Goguma away in anger, thinking they can't even get close. The mysterious figure watched as a large red dragon assisted the lizards in their attack, but couldn't cause any harm to Jin Hyuk. Atada, both angry and somewhat fearful, thought, This is my territory, but they show no hesitation. He realized this wouldn't do and banged his head, contemplating, Our forces outnumber them. If we resist, suddenly he was surprised when he saw a woman wielding a whip, defeating the lizards. Witnessing this scene, he exclaimed, That item is on the system screen. The timeline was synchronized and the lifelines were connected. A large coil of rope wound around a bright mirror, and the lifelines reacted to the mirror, bending the boundary. Melina stood under the light of the mirror, ecstatically shouting, I am alive. The system announced, Those who responded to the user's call, your lifelines are summoned. Seven lizards stared in bewilderment 
as more and more beams of light appeared. The system continued. This item is only to be used with other creatures. The large red dragon, terrified, exclaimed, What can we do? The system screen displayed a message indicating a connection to the floor had been made in response. A large foot stepped heavily on the ground as the leaders of the Bone Sword Clan, Kalka, and the Ice Sword Clan, Trantin Chouette, marched forward. Kalka pounded his chest, loudly declaring, In the glory of the Bone Sword Clan. As he finished his declaration, the whole Ice Sword Clan charged forward aggressively, led by Kalka. The red dragon and the lizards, with their eyes glowing, fought back fiercely against the Ice Sword Clan. The red dragon panted heavily, angrily glaring at the Ice Sword Clan and muttering, Why did these bone-brained creatures join forces with humans? Suddenly, a large hand squeezed its throat, choking it.